G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks, and today I have another true subscriber story that's been sent in from one of my loyal viewers. He wanted to share the, um, his marriage and divorce experience and just what he has learned. He wanted me, he wanted me to pass on uh, this message to some of the younger guys out there or some of the uninitiated. Um, and guys, I've taken your feedback on board in the background to keep you entertained while I tell this story. I've got a video of a young gentleman bags in it up in a VN. All right, so I'll start playing it. I'll have the link to this guy's video so you can just have a look at it as well. Got to give him some credit for putting it in the background. Um, it's from a channel called Clay Wong and uh, link to the video in the description. Give him a like as well. So I'm going to get started on this. Dear J-Man, I hope this message finds you well. As promised, here is my story. I am 50 years old now. I'm separated from my ex-wife for 10 years and I've been divorced for two. I'm from Bayside, Melbourne. I'm a first generation Australian and my parents have Italian background. My ex-wife left me after seven years of marriage and seven years together, a week before my 40th birthday. This was after many years of abuse. The upside of divorce was two girls, 16 and 12, who I share custody with. This woman left me with a lot of scars, which took me a very long time to heal. It wasn't until I had exited this relationship that I had realized the trauma that I had suffered. Looking back, 50 year old me wouldn't go near her with the barge pole. But like many guys, I grew up very blue-pilled and did pedestalize women. I was a guy who lacked self-esteem and settled for the first woman who showed me genuine interest. Uh, yep, and look, it takes a lot of guts to admit that, but um, it's very common for many of us men out there. I've also done the same thing, mate, very guilty. So a lot of these stories do resonate with me. The most important lesson for guys is to find their purpose into their life and to put themselves first. Build up your self-worth and self-esteem so that if any woman tries to test you, you won't put up with it. If you're a relationship guy, be under no illusions that the Australian family court system is geared against you and heavily favours women. If you want to get married, thoroughly reflect on why. Literally, the only reason one could consider marriage is that you want to have children. But even then, if it ends in disaster, the courts will not favour you unless your ex is unfit to be a parent and you have evidence of this. Finding a traditional woman who respects her man and recognises his value in Australia is almost impossible because modern women and a lot of men have been indoctrinated into womanism. Very true, mate. Very true. A lot of guys just uh, can't stack up, can they? My story is a public service announcement for all the younger guys back in my day. So all the, sorry, my story is a public service announcement for all the younger guys. Back in my game, in my day, YouTube and red pill knowledge wasn't available. Today, guys have so much information at their disposal if they are open to it. And now he wants to go on to share, and that's the main point of this, is lessons that he has learned in his life and especially uh, with women. Lessons I have learned. Learn to recognize what red flags are. So yeah, I, I would agree with this one. It's not so much recognize, but it's actually acting on it. Because a lot of, as guys, I, I can say we're all guilty. We put our head in the sand. Uh, something happens, you're like, ah, oh, no, nah, she's having a bad day, or it's a bit of a bad, bad spell. Things will get better. She'll be right. You put your head in the sand. It could be anything. And you could be suspecting her of being unfaithful, or she's being disrespectful to a point where you're uncomfortable with it. Whatever it is. We put our heads in the sand and we let it happen and we go on with life. And what do we find out? It gets worse. Don't ignore red flags. Read below. If you're a relationship guy, take time to understand what her relationship with her mum and dad is like. If a woman has a dysfunctional relationship with her mum, stay clear. My ex-wife had a really bad relationship with her mother, which she carries with her to this day. I'll say it probably goes for both parents. Yes, with the mum, and also with the father, because you've got to think about it. 
if she can't respect the man who brought her into this world um, as an authority figure, right? A lot of women don't respect their parents, especially fathers. They just run them over, right? Because guys have gone soft. A lot of dads don't hold boundaries as well. And these women run all over them. If they're not respecting their father, they're not going to respect you. That's the reality of it. The high chance that she's not going to respect boundaries. Um, she's not going to adhere to what's a reasonable conduct. Like if they can't respect the father, that's my big thing. And I've had women who weren't very good with their parents. They weren't good with their mum. They weren't good with their dad. And yes, in the end, you get that treatment because if they can't treat their mum and dad well, what do you think is going to happen with you? Does she have abandonment or daddy issues? If a woman has not had a dad or positive rail mile model in her life who has shown her and given her boundaries, walk away. She'll have trouble accepting your boundaries. Exactly. Does she have BPD? or bipolar, or suffer from other serious mental health issues. I'm not a psychologist, but what I learned looking back is that my ex has some sort of mental illness. If you're with a woman and she has personality where one day she is love bombing you and the next day she is a demon, then there is a likelihood she shall see she suffers from BPD or bipolar. Run as fast as you can. The damage these types will wreak on your mental health will take years to hell. Years to heal. And that's another thing. A lot of women use the crutch of, um, you know, PMS, you know, periods um, to be absolutely obnoxious and nasty for a week or more, a week, a week and a half of the month. A lot of guys just put up with it. Oh, I understand their hormones get thrown out of whack and all that sort of stuff, but a lot of them use that excuse um, pretty willy-nilly to be horrendous to men. Don't get married, but if you do, take years to get to know your woman. A woman will reveal her true colors after a period of time. Just follow their actions. Very true. As I said, guys, I'll never tell men not to expressly get married, but it's to know what you're getting uh, yourself into. It's what to know what that journey looks like. A lot of guys get sucked in with the first six to 12 months, all the action, you're getting everything. She's being perfect. She's being a super awesome girlfriend. And as well, you're being this perfect guy. You're being uh, Pierce Bronson. Um, you know, you're being da Daniel Craig, you're rocking up, you're dressing up nice, you're taking her out, you're putting all this effort. That has to end at some point, and then reality sets in for both. So you just need to know what you're getting into, but also you as a man, don't don't lead up as well with, you know, up front doing the male version of it, which is spoiling them rotten, and then turn the tap off. It's not going to end well for you. I always say for women... To, move, to maybe even move in potentially. I don't recommend it for most women. I don't think most women are, are capable of it um, without being a huge risk to you. So these are my boundaries, guys. Minimum three years of dating. Three years because during that time, especially between 18 months and three years, you're going to see some behaviors come out of the woodworks. You're going to see them go a bit mental. You're going to see the crazy side of them. All women have it. It's just a matter of time before it comes out. Can you deal with that? What sort of scale is it? You know, is it, is it going to be something that you can deal living with? Be married to? Is she going to blow your life up? You just need to make these assessments. Not make decisions after 6 and 12 months like many men do. They get caught up in the love, the romance, thinking it's never going to be bad. Another thing I'll say, and a lot of guys disagree with me on this point, because, um, you know, general red pill knowledge is to have a woman who wants to stay at home and uh, not be a boss babe. I'm actually the opposite of that. I... I actually recommend men if you're going to do this have women that work have women that are hard workers have a lot of drive but also can switch off when they come home it's not it's not easy to do but they're out there you can switch off when they come home and earn a similar amount of money to you it doesn't have to be the same but a similar amount because when you get to it to the end and it does happen with a lot of people 50 percent or more or whatever whatever the stat is right? who knows what the true number is it's a lot when you get to the end you want to be somewhat protected that you've been on sort of equal parity, especially if you're a guy um, in your 30s and 40s, you're getting married later or moving in with women later in life. Don't move in with someone who's done nothing and who's full of debt in their life. You're gonna, you're gonna have a really bad time. You're putting yourself at extreme risk. There's a reason why she wants to move in because you're the insurance policy and she can see you coming from a mile away. So if they have nothing, you need you need to get to the bottom of it. You also need to talk about finances. You need to talk about things that are gonna, how they're gonna operate when you live together. A lot of guys don't do this. They're scared to do it. They're scared to talk about budgeting. You need to do it. If you don't do it and you're both not on the same page, huge problems. It's going to wreck your life. Okay. If you're looking to get married, be wary of 30-year-old plus women looking to settle down and have children quickly. Very true. Why are these women giving you attention all of a sudden after you've been invisible? Ask yourself 
Why? Exactly. They're just trying to lock down a sucker. You're being hunted, as I say. Guys think they're out there on the dating apps hunting women. You're not. They're hunting you, right? Don't be easy prey. Once again, fudge it with sex. Be awesome. Do the whole chameleon representative behavior. Lock you down, have a baby, and turn into a nightmare. Happens a lot. A lot of women like the idea of marriage, but they are not built for it or to be mothers. My parents' generation, marriages were built on sacrifice and family. They rarely went on holidays, if ever. Eating out was a luxury, and takeaway pizza was like once a month. Women today are looking for the package for you to provide to them with a lifestyle, even, even if they are strong and independent women. Very true. Um, very spoiled, unfortunately. People looking at Instagram, looking at other people, um, keeping up with the Joneses, trying to rack up debt, having two nice cars on finance, um, having a huge mortgage they can barely meet, um, sending kids to the best private schools, all that sort of stuff that's just going to keep you working till you die. If you're going to get married, try to make sure that your lady has skin in the game. Exactly. Meaning she brings some assets or a good income to the table. Don't be that 30 to 40 year old guy who has worked his ass off his whole life and she and shacks up the late 20s, early 30s woman who has led the party life, traveled the world and banged over 100 plus guys and has zero to her name. As J-Man says, the action will dry up or get vanilla and then what does she bring to the table? 50% of marriages end in divorce and 70% of marriages are initiated by women. So you will be screwed over by the courts. Exactly. So skin in the game, guys. They need to have assets, especially if you're doing it at an older age, um, being 30s and 40s, etc. All right? Don't get sucked in. Um, uh, another thing, if they refuse to sign prenups, I, I don't really rate prenups. Not in Australia. They get thrown out. Once, once a tiny little circumstance changes, they're null and void, right? I think they hold up a lot more in America. I've heard of them being thrown out very easily in Australia. Be guided by a woman's actions and not her words in every aspect, whether it's with action, the type of girlfriend she is, and how she treats you and your family. If you're an average guy who looks after himself, be honest with yourself in all situations about why a woman is with you. Hypergamy is real. Don't be fooled by six to 12 months of sunshine. If you earn twice as much as your woman and she is more than attractive than you, then be real with yourself. Very true. Hope isn't a strategy. Things don't magically improve and good intentions are never good enough. Be ruthless when it comes to protecting your health and wealth. Well said, mate. Couldn't have said it better myself. A woman's love is conditional based on what you can provide or bring to the table. A man will never be loved for who he is. I think that's very true in most cases. There are some really great, genuine women, but most women will love a man for what he does for them, right? They always want to tell their friends, oh, he's a lawyer or he owns his own business or he's a doctor or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, we have this house, you've got these nice cars, keep it up with the Joneses, buying her things so she can tell her friends and compare. You know, that women compete uh, with each other based on men and social status that that men brings. A lot of women, uh, unless they're not into that, and there are women out there that are like that, guys. Maybe they're in a jungle somewhere, but they do exist, or the mountains in Europe somewhere, you know, uh, remote Baltic or Balkan uh, villages or something. Always prioritize your health, mental health, and physical and friendships and maintain friendships outside your relationship don't allow don't allow your needs and wants to be consumed and subsumed by her life yeah exactly like a lot of guys do that they give it up i'm going to replay this again guys let's just start it but and um exactly so she's going to be the focus the focus is all on the woman i've seen this it's happened to me when i've had girlfriends in the past i get rid of my mates i've done it a lot of guys do that you stop seeing your mates and you start seeing all her mates you start going to their barbecues you start uh, being absorbed absorbed into their friendship group you start seeing her family all the time you don't see your family as much or when you go and see your family they want to complain and carry on about it and stuff happens it's huge red flags you know, they don't like your mum, they don't like your dad, they don't like your brother or your sister, they hate your mates. So at the start, they love everyone, but as time goes on, uh, a lot of women get nasty. It's all about them and their side of the family. If you have kids, it's about her parents um, having access to the kids. And a lot of the time, uh, they'll make it hard for the husband's family to see them because it's her kids and her family's kids, not the husband's family kids as well. They're cut out of the picture a lot of the time. Women in their 40s and 50s generally fall into categories. One. Looking for someone to save them, step up and provide for them and their kids if the dad isn't around or is a deadbeat. Two, 
looking for Mr. Good Time, who will provide them with experiences, restaurants, nights away, and holidays. Exactly. They don't, they don't really change as they age. They keep doing the same stupid things. Guys need to be aware of it. The sad reality is that if you are looking to pursue more than casual hookups, the woman needs to be more into you than you are into her. There is no such thing as equal interest if you are more into her than she is into you. You will be taken advantage of. Never take a woman you meet off a dating app seriously. If you take a break off dating apps and go six months later, 50% at least will still all be there. This should tell you everything you need to know. Exactly. I'll say it's more than 50. I'm going to say it's 80%. I reckon if I went back on now, guys, I haven't been on for over three years. I reckon if I went back on now, I would, I would see the same chicks on there. I had taken time off. I had taken stints. So this is a funny, I used to be on the dating apps or dating websites. Dating apps went around before I got married. I got married. I was married you know, in a relationship in total, married and engaged and all that. It was about six years to this woman. Obviously, I wasn't on dating apps and all that stuff then. When I became separated and I got on the dating apps, I was seeing chicks on those dating apps. They were on uh, the dating websites. Like, I recognized them, a lot of them. Um, so a lot of them are just institutionalized on there. All right, guys, thanks a lot for listening to this far. And thank you very much, mate. You know who you are for submitting your story. And uh, guys, once again, if you want to share your pearls of wisdom for the guys out there, you want to share a story that you want the guys to hear, you want to get something off your chest, send it through with as much detail as possible, detail as possible to gmanspeaks uh, at gmail.com. Thanks. And once again, guys, thanks for watching this far.